When you found the place you would like to scan on your sample, you can go to Acquisition tab right here, and you will hear the filter cubes being moved out of the light path. Before you do anything else, I would highly advise you to go to the top menu and activate Show All Global option here and also check in the Show All Tools checkbox here. This will give you access to very useful extra settings in the software. You can ask the software to help you to configure a light path for exciting and detection of your fluorophore and for this you should go to Smart Setup here. This is a large database of the emission and excitation spectra of different fluorophores and also hardware settings to, for their detection. And most probably you will be able to find your fluorophore in the list. I have YFP and red fluorescent protein called tomato in my sample. So just type in the names of the fluorophore. And here's tomato. Uh, the PMT detectors in Confocal uh, are in organ focal are color blind, so it doesn't really matter actually which color you um, annotate or hold your uh, intensities with. But I would like to have white as yellow. And you can see that the software offers you several different options for scanning. Uh, the fastest option would be the fastest possible, and in this case, you will switch two excitation lasers um, lights simultaneously. Um, so here the excitation laser line for YFP and for tomato will be sent to your sample at the same time and this part of the spectra will be detected simultaneously. And you can see that in this case approximately 5% of the photons coming from the yellow fluorescent protein, probably this part, will be detected as photons coming from the red fluorescent protein. And this is called crosstalk or bleeding. And this is not really nice, especially when you are trying to colocalize yellow and red fluorescent proteins. And please also be aware that this estimation of 5% is based on the assumption that you have the same intensity of yellow and red in your sample, which is rarely the case. If you have much more of the yellow uh, fluorescent protein in your sample, then this would be probably not 5%, but much, much more. So another option is called best signal. And in this case, uh, the software offers you to split your scanning into two tracks and to detect yellow fluorescent protein in track one. Here's the excitation laser for it, and you will be detecting this part of the spectrum. And then you switch off this laser and switch on the laser for the tomato and detect this part of the spectrum. And this will most probably involve switching uh, main turning the main beam splitters, uh, changing the pinhole size, maybe even moving the prisms, and all this switching on and off uh, will dramatically decrease the speed of scanning. But as you can see, there is no crosstalk in this case. The smartest option is usually a compromise between the best signal and the fastest possible scanning. And in this case, the software decided that 5% of crosstalk is nothing, so you can go actually just simply with the fastest option. And again, please remember that this 5% estimation is based on the idea that yellow and red fluorescent intensities are, are the same in your sample. And there is also a linear mixing option, which we will talk about later. So in this case, I'm going with the best signal. I select it and then click on apply. And you will hear the hardware in the scanning head moving. You can see what actually the smart setup set up for you in the light path. So here, as you can see, I have two tracks now. And in the track one, uh, the software kindly switched on the 540 nanometer laser for me and set it, its intensity to 2%. And then put on its uh, light path the main beam splitter, which can reflect 514 nanometer light towards my sample. And then uh, I will be detecting this part of the spectrum on the detector 1. If I would like to have also detection of the laser light which transmits my sample, I just need to check in uh, the TPMT checkbox here. Come on. Here we go. And in the track 2, uh, I will have 561 nanometer, nanometer laser on, also set to 2%. 
by default and this laser will be bounced off by the main beam splitter 561 towards my sample and then I will detect um, emission uh, light this part of the spectrum with uh, detector 2 and as you can see I can switch between each track every frame every line or fast frame fast and in this case uh, when I switch every frame, it means that the software will first scan the whole frame for detecting yellow fluorescence and only then switch to detect red fluorescence. While if I choose the every line, the switching will have to go much faster. One line yellow, one line red. And in this case, um, the hardware, not all the hardware will be able to move fast enough. For example, main beam splitter movement is quite slow. So this is why you get this warning when you select each every line switching. Settings of the first track will be used. And if I click on yes here, you will see that now I have the same main beam splitter for track 1 and track 2. And you can also see that this main beam splitter is not suitable for 561 nanometer laser. So what I can do, I can change the MBS to this one, which transmits 80% of any light and reflects 20% of any light. And this is apparently enough to uh, have enough excitation uh, on your sample and let enough of emission from your sample to the detector. But I really don't like this solution. It makes things quite dim. So I would rather go with the main beam splitter 561 and switch every frame.